What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate reverse rants. No hate. So, as y'all know by now, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia had their fight last night. Ryan came out victorious, and he did what he had to do. Now, I want to revisit some things and focus on some things. Just so you guys can pay attention to the way things work. Now, Paulie Malignaggi, he has a video out. And on the video, he's saying that Devin Haney was exposed. Now, I didn't watch the video. I don't have to watch the video. But we already know Devin is not the biggest puncher. So basically, what would make sense for him to say he was exposed would mean that Devin Haney couldn't figure out how to get away from the left hook. He couldn't figure out how to do anything different. You know, the game plan that he had, it, it, it worked for a little while. I mean, it, it worked enough to get him some rounds you know, to get him the majority of the early rounds um, in, in, the, in the middle round, with the exception of, you know, of 7 to 12. And again, I gave Ryan the first round. But it would be more like, okay, he didn't show the technical savvy to do anything different. That's, that's more likely what it would be coming from. But I'm not here to focus on that video. I saw several videos they had thumbnails saying Devin Haney has been exposed. Okay. Do you guys know how incredibly childish that is? This man has one loss on his record. Let's be real. Devin Haney is one fighter that since he was 20 years old calling out Lomachenko, nobody made the excuse for him like they did Canelo about him being too young Right? Oh, he was so, so young. Right? Let's not forget. Right? When Floyd Mayweather fought Canelo, everybody thought Canelo was going to cream Floyd. Oh, Floyd's too old now. Canelo's young, strong, you know, a lot of power, real smart, real patient, solid boxer. It's going to be out with the old and with the new. Floyd spanked him. The excuse was, oh, Canelo was too young. He was 23 years old. Devin Haney at least has the heart to want to fight these guys. But when he fought Lomachenko, you know what they started saying about Lomachenko? I was, I was, I heard people say, I, I, I was really surprised that he was able to even perform that way at his age at 35 years old. Y'all didn't say that about Floyd. Y'all said Floyd fought a guy who was too young, who was 23. You understand what I'm saying? Well, at this point, he was what, 23, 24 when he fought Lomachenko, right? And he was, you know, so whatever. The bottom line is, he went in there, he fought Lomachenko. According to Paulie, Loma was going to knock Devin Haney out. That didn't happen. Now, we've seen Devin Haney get cracked by people in the past and he didn't go down. So, how are we going to start saying he has a suspect chin now? Like, this man was undisputed, okay, fought the best fighters he can get to. These guys didn't want to fight him. Tank didn't go to unify, but go become um, um, undisputed. Ryan didn't want to do it. Tiafimo, he tried, you know, and he needed that one belt that Devin had, okay? But bottom line is, these guys didn't want to fight Devin. They didn't want to fight Devin. Have to back the story up. This has nothing to do with defending his loss. No. I want people to just pay attention to how people change what they say. And how they boo one fighter but cheer another fighter and give another fighter the nod for something that they won't give for this fighter. So when Lomachenko, when Devin was his mandatory, 
he relinquished his title and became franchise. According to Mauricio Suleiman, he requested that. Okay, fight didn't happen. Ryan Garcia was the mandatory for Devin, WBC. He declined that to go have a so-called exhibition match that never happened with Manny Pacquiao. He stayed away from it. Now, Devin Haney was out here fighting him and his dad all over the place trying to, trying to get these fights locked in. You know, bottom line, I saluted them for that because they were the only ones trying to make these big fights happen. Okay? Tank Davis, let's not forget, just turned down 20 or 20-something million dollar fucking offer to fight him. $20 million, okay. Isn't it funny how, example, people say, oh, well, if, if Jerron Boots want, Ennis want to fight Crawford so much, why don't he pay him $20 million, $25 million like he's asking for? Well, first off, Jerron Boots Ennis isn't doing paying Crawford. And I don't think his team could put that kind of money up. They've never even fucking made $20 million in a fight. Hell, they're going to get $20 million to give Terrence Crawford, $25 million to give Terrence Crawford, right? So, but isn't it funny how when Tank Davis basically completely ignored the Haney's offer, everybody said, all the Tank fans said, man, fuck that, man. Like, 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 like and the LB said, he, he ain't the A side. Only Tank can make those offers. Oh, I get it. So, Jerron Boots Ennis is ducking Crawford because he don't want to give him 25 million like he's the one that's, that's paying him. But basically, Tank isn't ducking Devin by turning down the offer or ignoring it. Then all of a sudden, a couple of weeks later, about a month later, we hear he's fighting. He's supposed to be fighting um, Frank Martin, right? You see how things work? Now, all the criticism that people was giving Tank Davis, saying he's not fighting anybody, all Floyd and keeping him back, but isn't it funny how all of that turned into Tank Davis is the man, he's the face of boxing, he's the A-side? Tank Davis is in a position right now. He can go the rest of his career. He's, what, 29, 30 years old now? He can go the rest of his career. Just keep knocking out guys, but not even fighting for a title. And people will still be screaming, hollering, cheering. He doesn't fight, you know, like three, four times a year, so it's not like... You know, he what, what he's doing, he's at a point of, I want to make the lion's share every time I fight. So everything has to be on my terms. Which means, at his pace, if he even just fights two times a year, right? Who would it be against? Look at the division he's in and look who's left, right? So what I'm saying is when you look at where he is, well, he can do the same thing Canelo does. I'll fight someone with a belt, but I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight this champion, not this champion. You understand what I'm saying? And it's another accomplishment. And you see all these fighters starting to do the same things. Meanwhile, Bill Haney popping up everywhere. Saudi Arabia, the UK, everywhere, everywhere, trying to secure fights. Why would you not applaud the effort of, hey, these guys really want that smoke? So, let's move forward. He gets his ass whooped last night. No question about it. Put up a hell of a fight. It was a good back and forth fight, but bottom line is Ryan did the most damage. And he won the fight. There's, there's no more plain way to say it. But let me show you how people switch up. When they say things, they don't think about this. And I know that people say things and they, they feel certain things. They all people have different opinions and things. But see, I pay attention to all of these things because I, when I speak, I want people to not only think about what other people say, but what they say. Why? When you think about the way you see things, then it's like, damn, I did say that. Example, when Roy Jones fought Antonio Tarver, we all know Roy Jones went up to fight John Ruiz. Went all up to 199, 200 pounds, whatever it was. Then his very next fight, 
He's coming back down to 175 to fight Antonio Tarver. By the third round, Roy Jones was huffing and puffing, breathing with his mouth open. It got my attention because you never seen Roy Jones get tired like that. You know Roy, Roy had stamina forever. And it's like, <clears throat> we're in the house watching the fight and we're not thinking like, it, this wasn't even something that Roy had to tell us. I remember saying to my partner, like, you're talking like, Roy looked like he might be drained, man. Like, yeah, coming down. Because this is not something new to us. It's new to, to, to people that like boxing that don't understand what goes on and how things work. Okay, and we're saying he might be drained, man, like losing all that damn weight. Right, yeah, and that's what Roy ended up saying it was. Nobody's trying to make an excuse for Roy Jones. Like, people act like, people have this thing like when you fight, you get in shape, nothing can go wrong. No. He won the fight, but basically, people you know wasn't used to seeing Roy get tagged as much as he was by Target. And that was that over that was more overwhelming than the fact that Roy won. So a lot of people, oh, Roy lost, Roy lost. Yeah, and this is and Roy Jones. People, you know, the funny thing is, people that bring Roy Jones up to compare him to try to say they say that he was better than Floyd. And nobody knew who Floyd was. Roy Jones had a lot of fans, but he had a lot of people that didn't like him too. A lot of people couldn't stand Roy Jones. I remember it like it was yesterday. Well, if you remember, Antonio Tarver tried to shut that down and say, people make it like Roy Jones, the only person that have to lose weight. We all have to lose weight. That's no excuse. I hurt Roy Jones. I beat Roy Jones. And, you know, and he just kept that going. Now, we know what happened the second and third time he fought. He lost to Glenn Johnson before the third fight as well. Got knocked out by him. So we we know what happened with that. But the first fight, Antonio Tarver shut that down. The people that was cheering for Antonio Tarver wasn't no damn Antonio Tarver fans. I know people who didn't even know what the hell Antonio Tarver was. Up until Roy Jones, Antonio Tarver, the, the, the best, the most notoriety he got was for getting his jaw broken by Eric Hardy and losing to him and then beating him in the rematch. Nobody talked about that. Nobody cared. You know, Roy Jones for Eric Hardy and he beat him as well. But nobody nobody was talking about no damn Antonio Tarver. Nobody even knew the hell Antonio Tarver was. Okay? And I'm talking, you can sit and have conversations. Mike Tyson name will come up. Holyfield name will come up. Riddick Bowe. You know, different, you know, um, Lennox Lord. Nobody brought up no damn Antonio Tarver. Okay. And that's why out of all the legends, if you look right now at who talks about Antonio Tarver unless his face pops up on your screen or your YouTube or something. Now, he did all this talking, complaining about Roy. And it was an excuse, right? He fights Bernard Hopkins. Now, the people that was cheering for him, like I said, it wasn't because they liked Antonio. They were just glad that somebody beat Roy. That's all that was. Now, Antonio Tarver's being interviewed, and I remember the interviewer says to him, is it true we know that you did the Rocky movie, and for the part you played, they needed you to put weight on, and that you had actually ballooned up to 214 pounds? And Tarver sat there, you dumb enough to think that I would let my weight go up that high? Not true at all. I'm going to beat with our Hawkins. I'm going to this, I'm going to that. He went in there, and he got beat. By Bernard Hopkins, badly embarrassed, outboxed. Okay, what excuse? And I'm saying it like that because that's what Tarver said it, called it when Roy Jones said it. What excuse did he come up with? He was badly hydrated. He was. He was. He was. He was. He was. He lost all that weight. It burnt him out, and he was dehydrated in the fight, and and he lost so much weight. He was weak. Right? He was weight drained. All this stuff. Wait. So so why'd you call bullshit on Roy Jones just to turn around and say the same thing? Roy Jones came down 25 pounds of muscle. You came down from 214 to you denied it in the in, 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 in the interview, but but when Roy Jones said it, you you said it was an excuse. Now, because the people were not really Antonio Tarver fans so much, they didn't care. But the same way, without social media at that time and everything, to 
sit and ask them. So, so wait, y'all said Roy full of shit. What about this dude Tarver? Hmm? And I remember people was like, oh, we don't even care about Tarver though. He, I'm just glad to be Roy. That's how I know what I'm talking about when I say what I'm saying. A lot of Tarver was no household name. He was no big star, none of that stuff. His claim to fame is beating Roy Jones. Okay? And if you ask Ty Antonio Tarver right now, he's done interviews just last year, and he's telling you without Roy Jones, it wouldn't be no me. Like, Roy Jones, I owe everything to him. Okay? So all this sh the trash talk that fighters do, you know, this is what I'm saying. This is repetitive stuff. It's the same thing every time. All right? But once again, what went for 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 what didn't work for Roy worked for Antonio Tarver? No. He had the same exact excuse that Roy had. Okay. But the people that made excuses, yeah, because he did that Rocky movie, he was bigger. And, oh, so so wait. So now all of a sudden he is it's a reason for him, but it's an excuse for Roy. Nah, Roy ain't do no Rocky movie. He gained 25 pounds and went in for the heavyweight and won. Okay? Became champ heavyweight when you know had one of his portion of the heavyweight champion of the world. Now check this out. When Manny Pacquiao fought Oscar De La Hoya, I felt Oscar De La Hoya was weight drained. All right? But people love Pacquiao, so he could do no wrong. Nobody brings up anything about a catch weight, nothing. They don't bring up anything about the Pacquiao situation with Delahoy. You go through the history of all this shit, we can talk about who did what and who said what. You never hear people bring up the fact that Oscar De La Hoya was weight drained when he fought um, against Manny Pacquiao. But you see what I'm saying? Now, if they hated him, it would have been something different. Floyd fought him at his natural weight class. You understand what I'm saying? And he fought him way after Floyd fought him. But nobody brings that up because Pacquiao is a fan favorite. Okay, so wait. No different from when people bring up example. There are people that feel like, and I brought that up in, 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 in my video. When Ryan Garcia was saying, yo, why are you trying to weight drain me, though? Why are you trying to weight drain me, right? What did I tell you? The same way he's saying, why are you trying to weight drain me? Nah, I'm not trying to weight drain you. I'm just not going to let your ass balloon up to 175 again, so I'm in here fighting a fucking light heavyweight. Come fight night. That's what Tank did. It wasn't to weight drain him so much. I mean, I can't tell you exactly what was on that man. Mind if that was the case or not, but bottom line is, it makes all the sense in the world. He knows Ryan goes up to 175. So bottom line is, instead of trying to reach to say, well, nah, nah, he was trying to weight drain him. And, okay, whatever. Ryan accepted it, right? And then he got his ass whooped. But wait. Why is it that people say, with no problem, that Ryan Garcia was weight drained? Somehow, Errol Spence, no way possible that he was weight drained when he fought Crawford. And if you go and say, but look at the performance that, that, that he gave, right? That Ryan Garcia gave. That's why I think he, okay, look at Spence's performance. So why does it work for, 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 for Ryan, but not for Spence? You see what I'm saying? So now that's picking and choosing who we believe or we want to say, well, I, I, I agree he was weight drained. It doesn't make a difference about a catch weight. It doesn't. And I'm going to tell you why. When he took the fight, it doesn't matter in terms of the weight you gain, you, you, you rehydrate back up to. The point was he had to make a certain weight on weight on, um, at the weigh-in, and on fight night he had to be a certain weight, under a certain weight. Notice he was able to make that weight, though. You see what I'm saying? But Devin Haney, same way. Devin Haney sat here and said several times in videos 
that it's it's very difficult for me to make 135. And like, you know, I, I want the tank fight. I want these fights. The, the fights got to make sense though, you know? And, and and so, I don't know. And that's, and, and the thing is, Devin was always humble with his responses. Like he wanted to, you know, he want the fights and you know, he just want to fight, bottom line. The reporters are the ones asking the questions. You could see it in Devin Haney's face. Like, and, and I, you all saw the photos. You seen, you seen him at the weigh-ins. He looked like a damn skeleton in the face when he when he when he when he makes weight at one thirty-five. But that all being said, it was an excuse. An excuse for what? I remember Paulie said he was going to use the weight for an excuse to not fight Loma. Remember Paulie also said he got word from a reliable source that Devin and Bill Haney. Signed to top rank two days before the fight. And they're like, oh. And I'm like, y'all feed into this stuff. And Bill straight up came out and said, we ain't signed shit. So I don't know what the hell Paul he's talking about. This is just the hatred towards the Hades. They are, for whatever reason, people just want to see them lose. Now, to say that Devin Haney was exposed Let's get this straight. You had Devin Haney, Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia, and Tiafimo Lopez all in the same weight class. Lomachenko and what's his face that came along? Cambosos. All at the same time. And you mean to tell me that the one guy that went out and collected the belts and became undisputed champion and was trying to get these fights secured with these guys, and they don't want to fight. Oh, he's boring. Nobody cares about Devin. Blah, blah, blah. Like, all of these things, nobody even cared about becoming a champion. With all the fights we saw him have, and we've seen him get cracked by people at times, and people would always say, he gets hit in his fights, and I hit way harder. You know, we heard Riley with that. We heard uh, Riley saying that. He said the same thing about Tank. We heard um, Ryan say the same things about Tank, and he said it about Haney. Now, I have seen Sugar Ray Leonard fight Roberto Duran, the wrong strategy, and he didn't switch up and turn anything around in his fight. He came back and won the rematch. But in the first fight, he didn't switch up and do things different. I can give you so many examples of different fighters who have had those fights where they didn't. Now, at the end of the day, Devin Haney was the only undisputed champion at 135. Not Loma, not Tio. They needed his WBC belt. So they were unified. Max Kellerman went there so far, and even even other, other commentators as to refer to them as undisputed when they wasn't undisputed. And that's a fucking fact. So you mean to tell me, after all these fights that Devin had, we just learned that he has a suspect chin? We just learned that, oh, somehow he was exposed. He's overrated. Okay, so, so wait. Was Canelo overrated when he lost to Floyd? Just want to know. Was... Was was Mildred Taylor? Was he was he overrated when he lost to Chavez? Even though he really got robbed in that fight because he had the fight in the bag, and unless they was going to rob Chavez on the scorecards, which we found that that they wasn't. Um, bottom line is Richard still stopped that fight with like two seconds left on the clock. Okay, well, but but he wasn't the same after that beating he took. So I'm just I just want to know was is is, is Joe Frazier? Was was he exposed? Does he have a suspect chin when George Foreman knocked him out twice? Early in the fight? Is Ken Norton, was he exposed? Does he have a suspect chin? Because he got knocked out in the fourth round by George Foreman. Got knocked out in the first round by Ernie Shavers. So, I don't think he has a suspect chin. I think the, 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 the thing is, Ryan just hits hard enough to knock him the fuck out. And the other guys... 
you know, they they were able to get to him but not knock him out. It's a such thing as certain guys just hit harder than other guys. I don't think that a guy goes this far with a suspect chin. It's just like when Roy Jones, we seen him. I seen. I forgot who, um, the guy named that dropped Roy Jones when he fought. It's like he didn't see the shot coming. He, you know, he wasn't wobbly when he got up, but he went down. I think it was a guy from the UK, if, I, if, I, if I'm correct. But bottom line, we seen Roy take a shot. We seen you know the few shots that some of the shots that John Reeves was able to even get in on. Him. Remember one time Roy stood there and did this to himself. But when he gets knocked out by Tarver, all of a sudden, oh, he has a suspect chin. Now, his punch resistance wasn't the same afterwards. No. But at the same time, like before that, so you mean Roy got all, he went all that, he got that far with a suspect chin. You go back and watch Devin fights, and you will see there's times he took big shots, and he didn't go anywhere. But Ryan hit hard enough to knock him out. That's all I saw. I didn't see any situation where I could say it. And he was and he was getting hit clean. He was getting hit clean. He was in a fight where, you know, no, he didn't make the proper adjustments. He he made he made some adjustments, but Ryan was able to time him and catch him with that left hook. So no, he couldn't he couldn't continuously just make the adjustments to avoid the left hook. He couldn't. Now, why is it in this generation, every time somebody loses a fight, they've been exposed? Every freaking week, I see that word on somebody's channel about somebody being exposed. Bro, you lost a fight. So, he's not overrated. He is as good as he is. You understand what I'm saying? Wait, but y'all the same people that argue that Deontay Wilder is more than just a right-hand puncher. Yet, we got two good eyes to see that. No, he's not. That's all he has. So, for Devin Haney to be so exposed and overrated, you mean to tell me, pillow-fisted, no chin, overrated, Tank Davis and all these other fighters that refused to fight him, Ryan finally got in there with him, and they made it happen. But all these guys, they were avoiding easy money like that. So, what happens if Ryan Garcia, he looked, he looked good against, well, put it like this, he got the job done. What happens, though? Because right now he's on a high. What happens if his very next fight, he goes and gets knocked out? Then what? So, for all of the, you know... Like I told you, you know the fighters are going to, oh, he got knocked out. If that would have been me, I mean, he got beat. That me, I'd have knocked you out. And, and you looked horrible. Let's not forget. Let's go back several months ago. It was Shakur Stevenson under the microscope. The difference with Ryan and Devin, that was a competitive fight that just ended up with, because if you take the knockdowns away, which you can't, but if you take the knockdowns away, Right? How do you score that fight? You understand what I mean? It was because of the knockdowns that, you know, not only did he get dropped with the one punch, but he got up and he was getting hit with more punches. You understand what I'm saying? So, you understand what I mean? It wasn't like he went in there and put on a boxing clinic. It was just a simple fact he scored knockdowns and was able to pretty much um, land more shots. You know, and, and, and surpass him on the scorecards from 7 to 12. 1, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all Ryan. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Devin Haney. That's how I had that, right? Ryan won the fight. And the thing is, it's, it's nothing hard to, like, figure out. He won the fight. But every time a fighter loses one fight, you start seeing shit like, oh, he need to get a new trainer. Oh, man, he, he's overrated. Oh, man, he got a suspect chin. Oh, man. So all in one fight, we learn all these things about a guy who was the undisputed champion. But nobody wanted to fight him. It's just like, you know, when Anthony Joshua lost to Andy Ruiz. All of a sudden, Deontay, yeah, yeah, I'll fight him. I'll fight, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, 
Tyson Fury. All, all of a sudden, now everybody wants to fight AJ now that they saw vulnerability. He comes back. Remember, Deontay even said the same thing will happen in the rematch. See, he goes in there and what happened? He goes in there and spanks Andy Ruiz for 12 rounds, puts on a boxing clinic, and he gets criticized. Okay. Now, that all being said, every fighter, you're going to have a day that you get in that ring. And like I said, it wasn't no, oh, Devin Haney had a bad night. No. No. Ryan Garcia just did a better job at figuring him out than Devin did at figuring him out. It's as simple as that. There's no, he had a bad night. He just got beat. Fair and, well, no, well, not in terms of here. It was a lot of shit going on, a little, little. There was things going on, but bottom line is Ryan Garcia won. Plain and simple. He won. Now, a lot of things that I've said in the videos I've made, you watch over the next couple of weeks, you're going to start to hear other people say it. You're going to start to hear these bullet points get brought up. I know this shit. We watch boxing every week, bro. And, and we see the same things happen. And what makes no sense to me is when you say Ryan Garcia shocked the world, he pulled off an upset. How? No, he pulled off a huge upset. How is this a huge upset from people saying, oh, I knew all along, I told y'all, Ryan ain't had no chin, Ryan's pillow fisted, and Ryan's overrated. Okay. But do you agree that it was an upset? Hell yeah. Okay. Now, without making a hypocrite out of yourself, make that make sense. He's pillow fisted. He's overrated. He has a weak chin. But you agree it's a huge upset. Make that make sense. This is what I mean with the, you know the troll. I told y'all last night in the video I posted let the trolling begin. You you knew it was going to happen. Um, and all these fighters go through it. I Listen, I like to make fun of people when they got big mouths. I don't bite my tongue for nobody. I don't care who you are. But what I don't do, I don't try to shit on a fighter because they lose a fight. When fighters talk a lot of shit, but they're not willing to back it up, and they're just a bunch of trolls, and they don't really show any real desire. Like, 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 I laugh at Riley. Look at look at Riley Romero. He's been so quiet. You think he'd be the first one running his mouth, right? Like he didn't just get his ass whooped. You see what I mean? But he comes out with a little chihuahua on his chain. Comes out with his little chihuahua making fun of, of Isaac Cruz, right? And Isaac Cruz went in there and beat the fuck out of him. So we just see him get embarrassed, right? But somehow, because he trolls people and talks shit, people like Raleigh. And all of a sudden, his bullshit antics makes him a favorite. A, a, a fan favorite, I mean. Not, not, that doesn't work with me, though. So what the fuck can Ryan... What, what can Raleigh Romero actually say? I mean, once again, Devin went in there and fought, and he kept getting up. He kept trying. He never quit. What the fuck can Raleigh laugh at without being a hypocrite? So, bottom line, <laughs> all this talking about he's overrated, he's pillow fisted, down no chin, but yet you're saying he you know, that 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 um, Ryan pulled off a huge upset. No, if this guy can't punch, he has a weak chin, and he's overrated. Then that means Ryan Garcia beat an excuse of a champion. And the victory really doesn't mean shit. That's what you basically say. Plain and simple. If he lacks all those things that y'all just said, then how is this an upset? That means you must have thought Ryan was shit, wasn't shit. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not shocked about it. We see this type of stuff happen all the time. What's the guy that fought last night? Um... <clears throat> Damn, scrappy will he call himself. People was like, yo, I can't believe what I'm watching. Yo, it happens all the time. 
every fight is not an upset. The problem is you 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 underrate people. You undermine people. Ryan's stupid antics, people got sick of him. People who normally don't even like Devin just wanted to see Ryan lose because of his disrespect for boxing and his stupid, just the childish antics. That's that's what that came down to. But if you really look at it, you know boxing fans are fickle, man. You you fans period. Somebody can make a record right now. They got the hottest record out on the street, and everybody's, yeah, that's my song right there. Oh, yeah, his music, her music, blah, blah, blah. And if the next album isn't as good as the first one, ah, she fell off, he fell off. I don't, I don't fuck with her no more, man. I don't even listen to that shit no more. That's, what, that's how they are. So he lost a fight. This is what gladiators do. Oh, man, his face is all, yeah, it's boxing. Nobody's in there. Mm. Mm. Then they're trying to knock each other's heads off, okay? Um, <clears throat> but this whole talk that everybody's doing, somebody's going to be next. It's always going to be someone next. Example, the boxing world, okay? The boxing world was shocked that a world-class fighter like Anthony Joshua beat a guy named Francis Ngannou, who was coming into that fight with only one fight on his resume. The boxing world was shocked. So what did that tell you about the mind of the boxing fans, the boxing media and all that now? What did that tell you about them? You're watching right before your eyes the casual takeover. What were you shocked about? What, what were you shocked about? I mean, he was supposed to. He did what he had to. Yeah, but Fury. Anthony Joshua is Anthony Joshua. Tyson Fury is Tyson Fury. And then leave it at that. Once again, basing things on the wrong things. So, Devin Haney can come back and look sharp um, against another top-level guy and win. Look, when he fought Regis, Tank Davis and so many fighters were saying that Regis was going to knock Devin out. Regis wasn't able to get to him. Now, ain't this funny? Devin's pillow fisted, but he dropped Regis. You notice people don't like to bring that up. The Devin, people that don't like Devin Haney as a fighter, that they love to bring, they don't like to bring that up at all. So now they resort to saying that Regis is a bum, he's overrated. Now, I told y'all from day one. I said, I like Regis. I, I like what I like about Regis is he goes out there for the kill. But stylistically, skill-wise, Boxing all cute. He doesn't have all that shit. He's just a puncher. And I told you guys that Devin has everything he needs to destroy this guy. He should destroy Regis. I didn't see Regis as being on his level. I don't rate Regis as a pound for pound guy. Now, he had a title at the 140 division. I did a video. And when I asked you guys, do you think that the 140 division fighters that are the stars of that division is is as good as the um the, the top guys at 135 because you know at that time josh taylor was hot and you know him and regis fought um ramirez it was a couple of names they had that was you know um standing out and then people started to turn on you know um josh taylor because he got the decision over catterall and pretty much everybody including myself felt like catterall really beat josh taylor and I liked Josh Taylor as a fighter. I was the one saying I would keep Adrian Broner far away from him because Adrian was completely washed. But ain't it funny how Adrian Broner actually went in there and was gifted a decision against a C-class fighter, then fought another guy who's a D-class fighter. I mean, in his very last fight, no. But yet, people keep talking about what Adrian can do. And all Adrian does is talk, 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 Make a bunch of stupid videos, dancing, looking stupid, throwing money in, the, uh, flushing money down the toilet. Uh, went in Walmart, got the change out the damn what you go, throw the money in the air, and now he's walking around talking about how he only got thirteen dollars in his pocket and just you know all this goofy shit. But yet people keep believing in this guy. But somebody who's out here trying to act, actually be in the big fights for some, I I never understood the Devin Haney hate. I don't understand the hate of I don't I don't hate any of these people. I don't know them. Okay, but 
I don't, I never understood it because it's like, man, this dude just come to fight. He don't come to do interviews to bring up fighters. Y'all bring up the fighters to him. Just like me saying, people always say, Floyd Love talking about himself. But if you look at it, the same people telling you that shit, the same people making comments on channels, it's the content creators that keep bringing his name up. It's the interviewers that talk to him and bring up Canelo, bring up Pacquiao, bring up... It's them doing that. Floyd just want to remind you. You praising all these people and you keep bringing their names up. I beat all of them. Same dudes you talk about and calling them legends and future Hall of Famers. And they are. But let's not forget who you're talking to. They put themselves in that position. So Floyd is supposed to say what about himself? And this is the type of stuff I'm saying. I've seen videos with Floyd's name in the headlines, Floyd's name on the thumbnail, his picture, and Floyd didn't say a goddamn thing. This is just people putting his name in the headlines of something and stirring up, trying to stir the pot up. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. That's why I say when people make these comments, I'm like, you notice Floyd is not in this video at all? So what, what do you, like... I don't care how you feel about him. See, I grew up differently. I was taught to be independent. I was the only one in my family, the only one of my friends who left home. I left home on my 18th birthday. Took care of myself and never had to go back to nobody's house, never needed a roommate, none of that type of stuff. I've always been taught, do as I look. Say what you mean, okay, and mean what you say. I'm respectful to those that are respectful to me. I don't take shit from nobody on the face of this earth. And bottom line, I've never been a person to make excuses. Not for myself or for nobody else. Example, something real simple. How many of y'all go to work in the, mo in the mornings and you got some idiot behind you flashing their lights trying to get you to move, Right? And as you go to work every day, you start realizing you starting you see the same faces, the same cars every day, right? And the problem is those people don't leave their house on time. So it's everybody else's fault outside that they're late for work. It's not their fault. I have a neighbor that does that shit every time I leave to go to work. This this person supposed to have been gone 20 minutes ago. He gets to the car. Oh, fuck me. Got to run back in the house because he forgot something in all the time, and, and that's him. And he's flying out. Our street is 25 miles per hour. And he... Right? Okay. But it's it's not his fault. It's everybody else's fault. Everybody's supposed to move out the way so he can come through. It's... It, bottom line. So I've never been one of those people to, like, no, if I make a fuck up, that's on me. Simple. So I don't do that for nobody else. It's not about trying to tear people apart. If you look at my videos, I only go at people that's full of shit. Not, for example, I don't care for Ryan's antics. You don't see me sitting here, no, nah, man, no, nah, that was some bullshit, man. Fuck that, man. Fuck. No, I still don't appreciate the antics. I'm grown. I'm an adult. I have no interest in petty shit like that. What I saw is what I saw. What I know is what I know. What I understand is what I understand. And what I'm speaking on, you saw it. No, I mean, this is not about let's hate on Ryan. No. This is basically, right now, people are laughing at Devin. I'm just trying to understand, you know, they, they, they were talking shit. They were both talking shit. So what? They, they, that's what the fucking fighters do, right? But bottom line is, he was in a fight. That's what gladiators do. Or have we gotten so fucking soft as men that we think that for you to be considered a good fighter, you're supposed to win every round. Or if, 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 if your favorite to win, you're supposed to win every round of the fight or whatever. Or you're going to win every fight. Y'all say, see how y'all are though? For the people that's talking shit, oh man, this motherfucker got a loss already. He ain't get the 30 fights yet. I thought under, being undefeated don't mean nothing. Because when we, when, when the fact that when people, you know, hate on Floyd, they always, you know, make that comment to reference the fact that he's 50 and 0. 
But now all of a sudden, Ryan got a loss before he gets 30 fights. Like the comments, I read them, I hear, think people say things. But, you know, I, I, the thing about trolls is like this you guys just make stupid comments. Because you have a difference of opinion doesn't mean that you have a stupid, that, that I'm not calling anybody stupid for having a difference of opinion, but stupid comments are stupid comments. So if the fucking shoe fits, wear If the fucking shoe fits, wear it. You know, um, when I hear stupid shit like that, he's overrated because he lost a fight and he lost in a bad way. That's why I brought up some of the legends names. Are they overrated? Because I've seen them going in and get destroyed by guys. And I don't hear anybody no different from when Thomas Hearns. Okay, just like Thomas Hearns and Roberto Duran was supposed to be, that was supposed to be a super fight. Just like Ray Leonard versus Hagler, just like Ray Leonard versus Hearns. Hearns beat him in two rounds. Hagler versus Hearns was supposed to be a super fight. Well, they gave you three action pack, well, two and a half action pack rounds. But guess what? Did you think Hearns is going to get knocked out in three rounds? Or do y'all forget these things? So this is what I'm saying. Um, you you don't hear me talking about pound for pound list. You don't hear me talking about greatest of all time. I don't even believe in that, that, that greatest of all time shit. And, and in terms of the pound for pound list, I don't care about that anyway. Because whoever's at the top, um, like example, if you got Terrence Crawford as number one, that's all great. Pound for pound. That's fine. But do you think that if you put Terrence Crawford in the ring with Tyson Fury, he wins? Okay, so you understand what I'm saying? I don't really care about all that self-glorification shit. I'm just about the fights. I don't care about how much money you make. We just explain things and try to get the details out for people to understand what's happening. But I don't care on a personal level about any of that stuff, man. I'm Listen, I'm a man. I stand on business. Me and my family, we hold it down for each other, and, and, and that's my support system. I don't need money from Anthony Joshua. I don't want money from them. I don't, I don't, you understand what I'm saying? I, I don't, I'm not sitting up here debating or caring about who does what. My thing with people is they say things that's just completely not even true. They say things and don't have any claims to, like, what, what do you have to support that claim when I, when you ask them that? Because it, it, what else can it be? No. See, you're just going off your opinion. You understand what I mean? Your opinion. You're saying things about a fighter that you wasn't saying before that. And even for people that was talking shit, you know, we've all heard people say that Ryan, um, that um, Devin um, Haney was uh, pillow fisted. And I've always said, no, he has respectable power. That's why nobody runs over him. Nobody ever runs through Devin. And so you sound stupid saying, but he don't run through nobody. Because he's not a big puncher. Nobody said he was a big puncher. I said he has respectable power. Okay? And um, you, mu you must think it feels good to get punched in the face. And I and I know the people talking the most shit ain't never been in the boxing ring. Ain't never had a fight a day in their life. Not last year. Not last month. Not last night. Not yesterday. Never. And just talking. The trolls that don't even have content on their channel. They just have a YouTube channel just so they can watch YouTube videos and comment on everybody else's channel. You guys are the ones, LOL, LOL, ha, 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 ha. Like, like, and I'm like, you probably sitting there with the one piece pajama with the feet and little rabbit ears and they're just like, that's like that, that petty type of shit. That's not what this is for me. Um, you know, it's like when Wilder got beat by Joseph Parker, for example. Perfect example. I picked Parker to win that fight. If Wilder would have knocked him out, he'd have just knocked him the fuck out. No, no, no excuse. Wilder gets beat. Okay? Wilder fans can't just say the better man won. Nah, it gotta be an excuse for Wilder. But yet, because y'all thought Wilder was going to win, y'all said that Parker was washed up. And y'all felt so, so confident. And y'all said Parker was overrated. Okay? So Wilder got beat by, by a washed-up, overrated fighter. Now, I've been saying to you guys for the past several months, Joseph Parker is not the same fighter. I can see it. He's not the same fighter. His feet are slower. His hands are slower. He doesn't throw those combinations like he used to. 
and basically he slowed down. P plain and simple, he slowed down. You know, um, wear and tear on, e on each fighter is it, it happens. It doesn't you know happen the same exact time with everybody at the same exact age. Um, but he's still good enough. He was good enough to beat Wilder. You know, he was good enough to um, he was good enough to beat um, Zhang. Now, when I look at that fight, in my opinion, if Zayn doesn't get tired, he probably knocks Park out. It's like that quick right here when he dropped him in the first round. Park didn't even see that shit coming. So that's when I'm hearing Malik Scott talking about how slow Zayn is. I'm like, yeah, Malik Scott just making it sound worse and worse for Wilder because he's, he's talking like he doesn't really understand what's in front of him. Okay. What if that fight ends in one round? Whether it's Zayn knocking out Wilder or Wilder knocking out Zayn, shit happens. So I'm never shocked at any of this stuff. Now, at the same time, once you get it in your head that you like a fighter and you start to make those excuses and you, in your mind, you envision them winning every fight, well, when that day comes that they lose, I mean, it might be hard for a lot of y'all. That shit, I, it, listen, let me say this one more time in this camera. I have no emotional attachment to no fighter, no athlete, actress, actor, none of that shit. It does not bother me, not one bit. When somebody lose, they lose. What would I say and stress myself out for? Now, just imagine something, right? If you are upset, because Devin Haney lost and you feel some type of way. I'm going to promise you something right now. If Devin Haney knew you was upset because he lost, it ain't like he going to go and say, hey, you know what, man, what's your cash at? I'm about to shoot you $10 million, man, for being my biggest fan. Of. No. If you're happy and you're cheering for Ryan Garcia that he won, great, great. I'll promise you this. If right now you was talking to Ryan Garcia on social media live or whatever something, and you like, man, I'm your biggest fan. I was so happy when you won. I cried, man. And I, I really cried. I felt your pain. He's not going to say, hey, man, what's your cash at? Let me send you $10 million. So I'm just saying, um, it, it's really not that serious. Now, you, my blood, my flesh and blood, or you like a dear friend of mine, and I'm cheering for you, I'm behind you all the way. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that would be the only time that I, you know, uh, I, I, you know, put it to you like this. Winning and losing isn't the end of the world. Now, if something happened to one of my kids or like, my, like somebody, that, you know, people I love, something happened to them, and something, that, that's something different. Or if I watch somebody I love die in the ring or, you know. But in terms of um, just the fact your ego is scarred, nah. Ain't the end of the world. You'll be back. So why the hell would I feel any type of emotional attachment? I don't know these people. And I think a lot of people don't comprehend that about me because they're not used to that. They Like, they think that's just the natural order of things. But you're supposed to know like I told you guys, I always like the San Antonio Spurs in basketball. I can't tell you the last time I watched a basketball game. It's been years. I can't tell you the last time I watched a football game. Check this out. In football, I always like the Oakland Raiders, which is the Las Vegas Raiders now. I don't even watch the shit. I don't even, I really don't even know the names of the players on the teams right now. I'm busy. I got my own life to live, and I indulge in my family. And I love combat sports. I, I've watched, you know... But I'm not from Oakland. I'm not from Las Vegas. I'm not from San Antonio. My point is, people act as if, well, you supposed to cheer for the team that come from the state that you're from. Oh, really? When that became a rule? You know, same thing for them. Why do I care if they lose? You've never in your life watched the Raiders play 
and heard them say, oh, and he throws it to number 21, every Zodiac and touch that. I don't play for them. None of this stuff bothers me, man. It, it, it's not personal. I'm not losing anything. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not losing anything. You, you like what you like. That's all. But it's never personal. It's never personal. So, as I said, I don't like the antics that people do. There's certain things that they do that's just listening to the lies and all the nonsense. But, you know, outside of me doing boxing news with that, I don't, I don't, I don't sit up and think about these people at all. If they're not on my mind, man. Now, if it's like I want to watch a fight that I missed or something, I mean, that's about as far as things go. But I'm never on no, I don't talk to these people. I don't go on their social media to send messages to them. I'm not in their DMs. I don't. I'm, you understand what I mean? It's, it, that's not important to me. I can't tell you the last time I watched a Super Bowl. I see certain highlights, certain things. I'm a man. I'm into manly type shit. You understand what I mean? But like, I and I, I, I really think a lot of why I don't watch is, it's not that important to me. And then it's like for me, when I go to work in the morning, you got half the people crossing the parking lot, bitching about Joe Biden and Donald Trump first thing in the morning, crime, something they seen on the news. Then you got the guys over here arguing about who's the greatest baseball team of all time, who's the goat in basket. And it's just like, man, y'all have no life. Damn, this is all y'all do is, is, is sit here and fantasize about other people. I bet you when your wife come home, you don't jump up and run and pick her up and hug her and vice versa. Y'all, hey, 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 go, uh, mail, uh, okay, yeah. go in the room, close the door, you go in another room. Y'all ain't even in the same room and stuff like, like, like. You understand what I mean? Those are the things that's important to me. So this 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 is nothing. This this doesn't, you know, this you know how many people keep asking me when am I gonna monetize my channel? So don't don't that alone let you guys know that I'm doing this from the heart. But I don't take it to heart what happens to these fighters. You understand what I'm saying? It I, I don't lose sleep over none of this stuff, man. I don't know these people. You might meet some of these motherfuckers in real life in person and want to punch them in their face for something that they saw. These people are arrogant, stuck up, and they're used to people kissing their asses. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not into all of that. So, anyway, right now, all attention is on Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. Somebody else is going to get their ass whooped that's supposed to win. And people are going to be going, oh, shit, right? A couple months ago, it was Francis Ngannou because he was supposed to beat Anthony Joshua for whatever reason. Before that, it was Tyson Fury, right? Before Tyson Fury, wait, wait was which was first? I think um, Shakur had lost before Tyson Fury, right? But either way, bottom line, they all take their turns because, you know, Shakur didn't go into that. For him to say he went to that fight injured and all that, he started making excuses afterwards and stuff. It's, it's best to not even say anything. That means the pressure of the people is starting to get to you. Now you talking about you hurt your hand or you hurt. And it was just like, wow, okay. And I had did enough videos on him. I didn't even speak about it. I didn't even, I didn't even feel like making another video to repeat what he had just said at that point. But it was like, yeah, okay. Whatever. And, and, and this cycle continues. And just like I'm sitting here right now making these analogies... It could be a month from now, two months from now, whatever, and I'll be sitting here. Maybe a situation happened where I'm using this very conversation in this video as an analogy to make a point. Because it happens. It's boxing. Shit happens. You know, example, I'm not interested in seeing Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. Now, you got people saying Mike Tyson is going to destroy Jake Paul. Jake Paul doesn't stand a chance, right? And I keep telling you guys. If Jake Paul wins this fight, in his mind, he just beat a 21-year-old prime Mike Tyson. And the idiot casuals are going to carry on like that's what he just did. Jake Paul stock can end up going way up over beating the guy 57 years old that take these mushrooms, smoke weed, and is pretty much barely ever sober. Okay? Just say, this is what boxing has come to. I don't know if y'all been paying attention, but a lot of celebrities have been like ripping Mike Tyson, like, yo, Mike, what are you what are you what are you doing? Like, are you trying to make this this 
fucking guy famous or something. Like, I mean, all of these things. All of these things. People are like, what is Mike doing, man? Come on, man. Like, what are you doing? Well, whatever they're paying Mike Tyson, I I I would really feel like it's it's the money. You know? Remember Roy Jones? Remember Roy Jones last year said when he was asked a question about fighting again, and he's like, at this stage of my life, this like Man, let they give me millions. You know what I'm saying? What, what I'm going to do? With, with, like, like for what? What I got to gain? I ain't got nothing else to prove. Okay. But what you bring to the table right now, you're not worth anybody paying you millions. That's the whole thing. Right? But what happened after he said that? Some months later, he ends up in a fight with a former MMA guy, and he lost the fight. Now, Roy was, what, 50-something, 50 54, 50, whatever he was, 52 Whatever he was, 53, whatever. He um lost to a guy. That guy was 35. Guy's not a good boxer. It's just that Roy is, I mean, come on, far removed from his prime. You understand what I mean? But he didn't get millions for that. No. And you know what he said? He's not fighting his opponent. He's fighting the IRS. So you knew Roy is not going in here to read, you know, what is he, what is he going to do different? Roy can't even jog. Do y'all know that? You see how Roy jogs? He can't bend his knees. His knees are bad. Roy slides his feet, and he just, you know, his body's beat up. And now, I read something the other day where they're talking about Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson wanting to do another fight, and it's like, did we not just see what happened to Evander Holyfield and, and the last time he got in the ring? So, I'm like, Mike, let me find out that you're being petty. That you just want to be able to say, I finally beat Holy Phil. Holy Phil is like 61 years old. You're 57. Seriously, bro. And this is what I'm saying. I mean, they listen, they're going to do what they're going to do. But I'm certainly not interested in that. And I'm not interested in Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. And this is the type of stuff where like I told you, these misfits, the same people sitting here calling Jake Paul a genius and all that. No, they're using former great boxers or former great MMA guys who are far past their prime and much, much older than, than, than he is. Like I told you, he's fighting Mike Tyson, who's a heavyweight, right? Okay, but I bet you he will not fight Francis Ngannou. Because he knows Francis Ngannou will knock him out cold. He will. He knows that. Now, if Francis Ngannou was their age and you come like he, what Jake Paul does, he has to know, feel comfortable that you have nothing to really that he has to really worry about too much, because you're that far gone from being you know from your prime. So yeah, right now, Francis Ngannou is too young for him. So there's always going to be something going on. There's always going to be somebody being laughed at. There's always going to be a, somebody else getting embarrassed. I'm just looking at it like, man, it was a good fight. I don't understand all the laughter. You understand what I mean? I mean, if you're happy that Haney lost, okay, cool. If you're happy that Ryan won, cool. But all of this, this is why we can't even enjoy. This is why people can't even enjoy a good fight. People are too busy trying to be critics to the point of trying to just... um. Play, you know, I hate him, I like him, so I just want to talk shit. Man, it was a good fight. Bottom line. And, and and this is one of the things that even fighters are too stupid to do. You used to hear fighters say, man, listen, it's an honor to share the ring with this man. We put in there and put on a great fight. This is a whole different generation. Now everything has to be, you know, now don't get me wrong. There's things that happen, like I said, things that I pointed out. But the fight itself, it actually had a better response than I think people thought it was going to have because, you know, um, I, I, you know, was aware that the tickets, the ticket sales wasn't too, too, um, where they would like it had to been liked for, for them to have been at the time. I do not know if it was a sold out crowd, but the crowd was pretty full as they was panning the camera, um, last night. But, um, it, it, it it's like, you 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 it's just like for example when you when you have an opinion based on facts and truth when you actually present proof 
people get upset because Elijah sounds more fun to them. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not going to try to fit in with what everybody else is doing. It's the same thing. You have a good competitive fight, right? And yet, it's just, nah, he was exposed. He was this. He, it can't just be, hey, man, good fight. The better man won. No, it, it's, what, 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 what did we learn about Ryan Garcia last night? I, um, I mean, Devin Haney last night that we didn't already know. His performance was basically, here's the thing. Ryan obviously didn't have the stamina to, to rush and pressure him and keep pressure on him. As long as Ryan was being first and not, see, the problem was when Ryan was being sloppy. But for Ryan to be first, if he was working behind his jab, and it, like I said, if he's throwing that left hook off the jab, you know, going to the body with the jab and being smart, using lateral movement because he was coming forward. Then all of a sudden, he just starts going on the back foot. And it's like, yeah, he's tired, you know. And he had butterflies, too. He was scared before the fight. That's why he was doing all this crazy shit. And that's why he jumped on Ryan, um, um, Devin like he did. And when he didn't get him out of there, he backs off of him. And it's like, no, man, you, you got to be a finisher. You get a guy hurt, you get him out of there. You know, it's not like he hit him. Just got, he was catching him with good shots. He's hitting him and dropping him. And then he doesn't know. He, he, he just wasn't a good finisher, like I said. Didn't know how to place his punches to set him up and get him out of there, man. Devin was done. He had Bambi legs, man, several times through the fight. Now, with all that being said, it was just a good fight. You know, it was a good fight. But somebody will be next. I'll be sitting here in front of his camera. And you'll be doing you'll be doing video new, um, you know, boxing news on somebody. It could be anybody. You know, but it's always gonna be like when when a fight and the thing, what I'm saying is this wasn't seen as a super fight. People really thought like like, you know, Ryan didn't have a chance to win this fight at all. So the fact of the matter is, that's why a lot of people were saying it's an upset because they 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 felt like nah. Ryan is the, and it's because of the way Ryan is acting, all the stupid nonsense and all that, and 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 so it's like, you know, but I told you what his advantages was and why he did what he did, no secret. But look, you know, this is what 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 what's funny about it to me is now when you look at the fact, like you had Leonard Hagler, um, Hearns Duran, right? Now guys like Benitez was there as well. You know, you had other guys that was, you know, but those four, those top four, right? Just think about it. When you had those guys, they all fought each other. Now, remember, we compared that era to when you had Tiafimo, Tank, Haney, and Ryan at 135. And we're like, man, they got a dynasty right here. They don't realize it, man, because they're so focused. Everything is this, this, the money, the money, the money to where, you know, they're not even... They don't, and, and you saw, and I'm telling you, the powers that be don't care about legacy. The fighters don't care about legacy anymore. I believe strongly that Devin does. He showed me he does. I believe Anthony Joshua does. He shows me he does. You know, I believe Usyk cares about his legacy. But there's a, most of these fighters don't care anymore. They're all just about the money. So, you know, as long as they're getting paid big money... And you know when you're on top of a division, and you're like a big you like you're like a big fish in a small pond. Yeah, you can make a lot of money, and you have opponents that don't have names yet. So even if they're good fighters, they don't they don't have the power to 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 you know try to get things in their favor. They have to take what's given to them, and yet you're making all this money. And what happens when you step up in competition? Like, you know, when you look at Errol Spence, for example, right? He wasn't exposed when he fought Terrence Crawford. Errol Spence was never overrated. Terrence Crawford is just that much better. Why is it so hard for people to just understand that? Somebody lose, they had a bad night. Somebody lose, oh, this person was, was is always something. But yet, there'll be other fighters and y'all say, no, that's an excuse. See, like, 
<laughs> I don't know. I remember one time, um, there's a channel. What is her name? Uh, what is her name? I had to come to me. There's a, um, and I, and the thing was, I, you know, I never had any issue with anybody, but I don't tolerate disrespect from anybody. And a lot of times what happens is somebody might be joking with you, but when you have like a bunch of comments from a bunch of idiots and then all of a sudden his person come in and they join the party, like to me, that's disrespectful. It's like for me, I'm the type of person if two people are arguing and I tell you, hey, Keep that between you and him. Like, don't come to me. Yo, Aries, this motherfucker's up. Nah, nah, that's between you and him. Because you saying that and that motherfucker say the wrong thing, then I'm going to be in here slapping shit out of both of y'all. Like, no. That's disrespectful. That's that's between you and him. I ain't, don't, don't come to me for shit. Right? Lady Chan. Lady Chan. I was plugging people to her channel. Yo, support Lady Chan channel, man. She knows that, whatever. When I first started this channel out, man, I was trying to send a lot of people love and recognition. And and, and my channel was was just starting out, you know. Um, and then you see that. I'm like, okay. I think she was at like 150 subscribers or something like that at the time. And I'm like, yo, check out Lady Chan and this, that, whatever. And so, but yeah. Um, I remember when I did the video and I said, Spence didn't look right to me. You know, when you watch a fighter for so long, you can see when the movements are not the same. You can see when they're throwing the shots different. You can see like, like something is just not there. Whether it's the timing, the, you know, the, the, um, the reaction time, everything. Just something just wasn't there. And this was before Spence, um, Crawford started really put it on him. Right from the very first round, I'm saying Spence don't look like. From the first round. And I'm sitting there like, yeah. okay. Spence got his ass whooped. And because at the end of that fight, at the press conference, even in the ring, when they asked him, um, do he wanted to run, they asked him if he wanted to run it back. He said, definitely, we want to, but, but at 154. So I'm saying, well, it's obvious he's saying he feel like he'll do better at 154. And you got people in the comment section, oh, why are you making expenses for, excuses for Spence? Like, what kind of drug you smoking? I'm making excuses for him? He's the one who said he wants the rematch, but at 154. And yes, I said he didn't look right. But I'm making an excuse for him by saying that? So I'm not just giving you my honest opinion? When David Hay was training for the rematch against um, Tony Bellew. When I watched him training, when they had the live, the um, open workout, I said, I don't like the way David Hay look. In fact, even before that, before he lost the first fight, I didn't like the way David Hay looked in his comeback fight. I remember this dude was pulling, David Hay was literally pulling his hands from behind his back, punching like a damn action figure. You know them action figures, you squeeze the legs and the body, to, he was literally, and I'm like, nah, I don't like the way he's throwing them shots. It's like, you're trying to get as much power in your shot as possible, but you're doing it in a very sloppy way, and because the guy he fought was so mediocre, he couldn't even make David Hay pay for that. I didn't like what I saw. And when he lost to Tony Bellew, now, yeah, he had the Achilles tendon, um, torn Achilles tendon. So am I making up an excuse for him for saying that? No, we know he had that. But the rematch, I'm talking about the live open workout. When I watched him in the ring, shadow boxing, I wa I'm watching his movements. I said, yo, David, he look old, man. My partner was like, yeah, he does. The way he was moving, the way he had to plant his feet and the wide stance. Every um, You watch an Asian fight. And I think a lot of times, because people don't, you don't know my background. You don't know what I do, nothing of that. You don't understand. I'm looking at things in a completely different way than you are. Okay? It's just like if you go to get your hair done at a hairstylist or a barbershop or whatever, right? You don't see what the barber see. You don't know what the barber know. You can tell 
that person how you want your hair done, right? But you don't, you can't do it yourself. That's why you're going to them. So they see, they deal with different hair textures, hair patterns, stuff that's not even on your mind. But they know what to do. They've been educated on this. Same thing. I'm watching. That's why it's been many times. Y'all ask me, what do I think about this guy versus this guy? Who I think when? And I tell you, I really don't know. That's the honest answer. I don't know every fucking thing. If I don't know, I don't speak on. If I don't know and I speak on something, I'll tell you, I'm not sure, but this is what I'm, you know. But I'm saying, you see when a fighter is starting to lose it. And I was watching David Hay. He looked slower. His hand and his feet looked slower. His movement wasn't right. Um, I could see, like, even the way how he would, like, throw a shot and then, like, move. And he shadow box. And I'm just looking. I'm like, man, he doesn't look fluid. And he looked like he's slow on his feet, too. And, nah, I think he's just trying to, like, like not mess his, um, you know, aggravate that Achilles tendon. I'm like, bro, if he has to be super cautious right now for shadow boxing, then what's going to happen when he's in there and Tony Bell, you throwing shots at him? And he just didn't look right. I said that shit before the fight even happened because I saw an open workout. And I just didn't like what I saw. And we seen what happened. He was slow. His reaction time wasn't dead. His ass, like it's like he got old overnight. And I watched him. And what happened? Nobody making no damn excuses for him. Nobody was trying to take Sean away from Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew went in and did what he had to do. Plain and simple. It's not his fault. Y'all signed the contract to fight. You came in at what you had. He came in at what he has. No, that's, that's, how they, that's how it went. And he lost. He got his ass whooped. Simple. So there's no excuses to be made. You know, but like I'm saying, trust me, somebody else will be next and we're going to be going, oh, this person did this and this. And every time somebody loses a fight and it's supposed to be a so-called big fight, even though, you know, people, a lot of people didn't see it that way. You know, because of the way, you know, maybe the people in attendance might have, might have saw it differently. You know, and that's probably why they went and bought a ticket to go out and see the fight. But, you know, because you saw it as Devin was going to destroy him, it really wasn't an upset. It's not an upset. When you look at the person that you're fighting, like when Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas can actually box, man. Buster was just known for quitting. Buster was just known for, like, not giving it his all, you know, but Buster could actually fight, and you saw that, and that was like that night especially with people, the only reason he lost because his mother died, I mean, he won because his mother died, like, okay, so, what What if that was the motivation, so, he still could have lost, just because, you know, automatic win, be, oh, my mama died, I'm going to win for sure, no, 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 so what, you know, but, then the point with that was they tried to take his shine. He only won because his mom died. And, oh, they gave a long count. But nobody talk about how long the count was when Mike was on his fucking hands and knees trying to get his mouthpiece, right? See, all that kind of stuff. Favoritism. Favoritism. People set up talking about how Holyfield kept headbutting Mike Tyson. Mills laying the referee in the ring said bullshit. Head Mike Tyson was the one initiating the butts. But Mike Tyson, same thing. That's why, that's why I don't have conversations with fanboys. See, like when Alicia Baum got in there and said, you can't, you can't argue with broke people. No, you can't argue with stupid people. And I don't even argue. You can't have a conversation with stupid people. That's why I, if it wasn't for copyrights, man, I would put them fights up and sit here. And I was like, we're going to count all these headbutts together. And you'd be sitting there looking stupid because we're in round nine and ten. And you like, where the headbutt? Wait, wait, yeah, exactly. You, you know, you have an, intention, an unintentional headbutt. And what kills me is this, right? I don't know about the rest of y'all, but my head is on the top. Not down here on my chin. And I would love to know how, for my head to be up here, I'm headbutting somebody whose head is here. Without me risking my eye hitting instead of my head. I'm up here now. And you're down here. But bottom line, y'all know what I'm saying. Just a whole lot of stupid nonsense. And I sit here and watch things, I screen it, I go back and forth, I check things, I look, I just analyze. Why you sitting up here in fanboy mode just trying to look? You know like when somebody, it's like the difference of somebody asking you a question versus them asking you a question to tell you they know the answer? It's a difference. 
You know? Example. So wait, you was in Philadelphia last night. Like, like did you, oh, did you go to Philadelphia last night? That's a question, right? Okay. But that same question being asked like this. You was in Philadelphia last night, wasn't you? I'm asking you to tell you I know where you was. When I say it that way. Otherwise, I'm just going to ask you and wait for your answer. But I'm asking you, and as I'm asking you, I'm asking you, telling you that's where you were. That's what I believe you was. Or that's what I told. So I'm saying, I'm saying that not to ask you, but to tell you I know. That's the difference in that question, right? And this is exactly what in life, you got to pay attention to the things. You got to pay attention to the language, what people say, what they do. That's why I always say, I can find hypocrisy and so much shit. And when I bring it up, you know, people get upset. Like, for example, right? I made a comparison about um, like Anthony Joshua, for example, and like Terrence Crawford situation. Now, Anthony Joshua was supposed to fight Philip Irvin. Remember that. Now, you as a fighter can 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 say you want to fight, but the sanctioning body still have to want, they have to grant you that. So basically, remember we was being told that Anthony Joshua, it will like Usyk and Fury, y'all know the story. They're gonna have two fights. In the meantime, Philip Erkovich was is mandatory for the IBF. And the Saudis was trying to get um Philip Ergovich versus Anthony Joshua for that vacant belt because it was going to be stripped from whoever the winner, the title holder is after their first fight. Wilder fans was going, oh man, they're already making the excuse to duck Wilder. And in fact, Teddy Atlas even said that. That that is an excuse to duck Wilder. So wait, wait, wait. So Anthony Joshua wants to be World Heavyweight Champion again. He's going to turn a title fight down because he's worried about people saying he's ducking Deontay Wilder, whose name isn't even in the cards. And Wilder hadn't done shit in a long time. Fought Hellenius and disappeared. Right? So wait. AJ goes and he beats Hellenius. People had a lot to say about that. They had a whole lot to say about that. So wait a minute. Terrence Crawford is going to fight for a vacant title at 154. Yet he still holds three belts at 147. Jerome Boots Ennis has his other belt. You're going to make more money fighting Jerron Boots and his, than his mag, whatever you call it, whatever his last name is. But you're going to, but, but, people saying, but it's another accomplishment. Yeah, a title and, a, and another weight class. I get it. Jerron Boots and his has a title. Terrence Crawford is unified, not undisputed anymore. He wins that title back, he'll be undisputed, okay, three times. And I say he's char he's, he's this man, he's being he's asking this man for twenty five million to fight him. He's not going to make that fight in his next guy. If you can fight this guy for less money, right? He's not going to get more money fighting this guy than he would for fighting Jerron Boots Ennis. So why can't you fight Jerron Boots Ennis? It's the logic that I'm bringing out. Then you got these idiots that oh man, well who is he supposed to fight? Like, you're so dumb, you don't even understand what I'm saying. How can you bash Anthony Joshua for wanting to fight for a title? It's not like he promised to fight Wilder or something like that. He said, no, obviously he changed his mind. No, Wilder's name wasn't even in the cards. It was just people every time, after every fight, whether it was Jermaine Franklin, you know, um, 
after it was, uh, you know, Robert Hellenius, they kept bringing up, even in the interview, they keep bringing up Wilder's name. When they interview Wilder, Wilder says everywhere he goes, the one guy that everybody want to see him fight is AJ. But there was nothing official. Eddie Hearn wanted him to fight three times. Eddie Hearn wanted to fight with Wilder. But at the same time, Wilder was talking about fighting Ngannou. Now, people forget the time frames, and they forget that these things happen. So, the analogy I was making was it's a similar situation. So, what's like, like how is it okay for one guy but not the other guy? One guy is clearly ducking, but the other guy isn't, and he's doing the same exact thing. Other than oh, only he's not going to a different weight class, Anthony Joshua, of course. But bottom line, what I'm saying is, how is he ducking? Listen, and let me say this again because people are hard of hearing. I don't think Terrence Crawford is afraid of Gerard Boutinis. What I'm telling the idiot fanboys is, you're the one saying, oh, he'll smoke Gerard Boutinis. He ain't, Gerard ain't beat this guy. He ain't beat that guy. Okay, who the fuck did this guy with 11 fights beat? Who, who did he beat? What, what accomplishments does he have? Okay, and he's not going to make more money fighting that guy. So isn't that hypocritical to sit here and try to chop down Jerron Boots in his resume, who has w way more fights than this dude, and is and, okay, and is well more well known here. Somebody in the comment section told me the guy's known in Europe. Okay, that may be. He's not known here. So that means nothing. That means nothing. <laughs> Manny Pacquiao is well known in the Philippines. If he wasn't well known here, he would have never had that fight with Pac with um with um Mayweather. Doesn't matter um that he you know yeah. This is why you hear fighter people say a fighter a, a a guy has a whole country behind him. Okay, uh, Cambosos has Australia behind him. Is he a superstar here? He got more recognition by fighting Devin Haney. He got more no, but he fought in his country. Cambosos is no big superstar here. But you know who Cambosos is. This Madrid, Madrid Marvel, however you say his name, Dracula, whatever. Who knows him? And I've been doing this channel for some years now. And I'm telling you, we can go through 154 and talk about who's who at 154. And this dude's name never comes up. His name has never came up. At no point in time. Just like when Crawford went and fought David Avenesian. Who the fuck knew who David Avenesian was? See... When I say that, let's not be stupid. I'm not sitting here saying there's not one single person on this earth that don't know them. I'm saying as a draw, as, oh, yeah, that guy can... Nobody even knew who the hell this dude was. This is why we had to Google these people. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's like, who, who is this guy? These guys are not well-known. Because, not, not, because you're not well-known doesn't mean you can't fight. Let me tell you something about this guy, Mac, Mag, Mad, 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 Dracula. He's going to call him Dracula. Let me tell you something about Dracula. He's flat-footed, okay? He has a wide guard, and he throws winging, looping punches. He leads with his chin, and he has a very amateurish way of fighting. Now, unless Terrence Crawford has slipped, Terrence Crawford should eat this dude up. He fights a lot the way Spence was fighting. The way Spence was fighting Crawford, that's how this guy fights a lot. He comes in, he comes in, he's here, his hands are, are wide open, and like I said, he comes in, he paw upon he. All right? Or everything he throws is over, it's looping, and it's slow, and he's flat foot. Okay? And he's, he leads with his chin. Wide guard. If you've never seen him fight, go watch him fight, and I bet you go, damn, Aries, you're right. So what I'm saying is I'm not faulting Terrence Crawford for doing what he's doing. As I said, it's the dumb fanboys that I'm addressing who sit here and say something completely different from what the fighters say. So when I sat here and went out my way to post you the clip of Terrence Crawford out of his own mouth saying, oh, it's always about the money. Of course, it's always, always about the money. Yeah, and all this, and telling you fans that I got the right, I earned the right to do whatever the fuck I want. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what they feel. Fuck them. After you motherfuckers sat here and told me, 
Bud is different. He ain't about the money. He's all about legacy. Mm. That's what your fucking little crooked mouth said. What did his mouth say? So this is what I'm saying. The comparison wasn't even <laughs> um, against Bud. It was against the dummies. It's to, it's to bring awareness to, do you listen to what you're saying right now? You fools who take things personal is because you feel guilty like, yeah, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm telling you how dumb you are, it only offends you when you feel like, damn, I fit that description. I am a dumb motherfucker. Simple. You know I don't talk indirect. Ain't a motherfucker on the face of this earth that I won't say what I have to say to. So whenever I'm telling you anything and you want to come with the fucking disrespect and you want to respond with... Yeah, that's why I tear y'all asses up because y'all be talking stupid shit. You want to tell me what you think Bud is or what you want Bud to be. But then Bud out of his own mouth says exactly what I tell you he say. Now when I play his audio, you see you notice one of the things you always notice. When you bring proof, the people with the biggest mouth shut the fuck up, don't they? But they love to open their mouth and try to debate about something because they're too stupid to comprehend the most elementary things that you say. Like I said, you don't need a college education to understand the, a simple analogy. How could you complain about AJ doing the same thing that Bud is about to do? What's another analogy I use, y'all? If somebody raped your kid, or if somebody was raping kids on a, on a block, huh? let's say it was one of them purge type situations, like a real live purge, and they out here raping kids, you, you, you gonna go rape a kid too? Well, everybody else was doing it. So, so that makes it okay for you? No, no. If I'm saying I don't like something that this fighter is doing, I'm not gonna applaud this fighter for doing the same thing that that person is doing. And this is the difference. Like I keep saying, you guys are not content creators. Even content creators are fanboys and, 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 and biased. I'm neither one. Get used to it. Because this is where people think that because I speak good about a fighter, like I'm a fan of theirs and me going rah, rah, AJO, rah, rah, Errol Spencer. No, I don't care who you are, man. I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be fair about everything. That's who I am. And I would think that you would respect somebody like that versus me being a part of the go along, get along game. But it's obviously that a lot of y'all still, they all don't get it. Y'all have that same bullshit in y'all that these other channels have that y'all complain about. You just cheering for the opposite, for, 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 for the ops. That's all. In other words, if they pro Wilder, you're just pro AJ. But you're doing the same thing. I'm not looking for fault in Wilder. I'm not looking for fault in AJ. I'm not looking for fault in nobody. I listen to what you say. Example. Okay. I'm going to give you a real simple analogy. If you live in San Francisco and you're on the phone with somebody and they, hey, where you at right now? Well, you know, I'm in San Francisco. I'm home. Oh, okay. Where you at? I'm in New York. I'm coming out there. Oh, yeah, it went today. Okay. All right. I'm going to see you in five minutes. Now, you're going to either, one, think that they're joking. Two, this motherfucker's already here in San Francisco. He surprised me, right? Or they made a mistake. Or something's wrong. They're crazy. Because there's no way. There's not a fucking jet, airplane, train, nothing fast enough to get you from New York to San Francisco in five minutes. So it's just called common sense. That's all it is. That's all it is. So my point is, you know damn well, you know how stupid you look? If somebody told you, I'm in New York, I'm coming to San Francisco, I'm going to see you in five minutes. Five minutes pass, six minutes pass, ten minutes pass, and you call them back and go, hey, man, what happened? You said you'd be in five minutes. But you really, in your mind, believe that they're still in New York. So who's really the crazy one? And this is it's, it's that simple, y'all. It is that simple. So 
this is why sometimes when I when I make videos and I and and, and we digress on things and, and and I put emphasis on situations is because I want people to pay attention to what I'm saying and what I mean when I say something, and not hear something like a lot of you. This is the problem when you go from channel to channel. You do what you want; it's your business. But you guys go on channels and you argue with other people. You have conversations about certain situations and certain fighters. So then you come on this channel. I might not say things in favor of the fighter that you like. So you take the same energy you got from this last channel that you were just on, talking about the same type of subject, and what do you do? Before you actually listen and pay attention, you're responding. Then when I bite your head off, you sit there and look at what I wrote and realize, oh, shit. Oh, now I see what he meant. All right. So keep the insults and the stupid comments to yourselves. We don't need none of that. Bottom line, you know how I do. Um, at the end of the day, it's just boxing, y'all. It's not the end of the world. You know, I don't have a gambling problem. And I told you, did, did, I, did I not tell you, I only bet when I feel like I got a sure thing. Didn't I tell you that? Okay. At the end of the day, it is what it is, man. Well, like I said, it's always going to be somebody else. So, yeah, they're going to troll Ryan Gar they go, um, They're going to troll Debbie Haney for a long time um, until the next person that, 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 you know, steps up and fight. Like, example, what if Frank Martin fuck around and beat Tank Davis? What you think would be a bigger upset? Frank Martin beating Tank Davis or Ryan Garcia beating uh, uh, um, um, Devin Haney? And it goes to show you that you guys didn't really have faith in Ryan because of his own stupid antics. And if you look at his track record, it's like, okay, he didn't really give you nothing to really be have faith in. Frank Martin, he's a good fighter, but, you know, he himself is in a position where he's still in the proving grounds um, st um, stage to get to that next to get to that next level. So who really expects Frank Martin to win? So my point is, what if he goes in there and beats Tank Davis? People going to be like, oh, you understand what I mean? And you want to know what's going to happen? You're going to have people from 135 <laughs> up to 140 going, ha, 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 LLL, look what happened to you. Oh, Tank Davis was exposed. Oh, he's over, and it's like, okay, right now, now he's exposed and over it. Man, do you know how many times these same tired, lame-ass journalists, content creators, and, 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 you know, these, these people say the same things all year long about the same fighters and they just keep recycling the same nonsense. And yes, please believe this era of time, people show up on your channel just to show hate. I've had people jump in the comment section. I'm just here for the Anthony Joshua hate. Or I'm just here for the... It's like, right. We're not into that nonsense. These are a bunch of nerds, a bunch of kids... Okay, I was fucking just 75 years old, a bunch of kids who have no woman, have no life, don't get no ass, because all they do is sit up on YouTube all day, every day, going from channel to channel. I see you when you don't see me. And that's all they do. Channel to channel, channel to channel, arguing with people. That's why I eliminate so many people from this channel. Because I'm not here to argue with you guys. And I'm not here to call you names and all that. But when you act stupid and get out of line, well, I'm going to curse you the fuck out. You understand what I mean? And either that or I'm just going to delete you, block you. Because I don't, I don't come here for that. All right? I keep telling you kids, stay out of grown folks business. There's no grown man or no grown woman that should be in their feelings and arguing and, and get... Feeling any type of way over some goddamn celebrity. I can see you now laying up there if, if you had a woman. Hey, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking all angry? You motherfucker keep talking shit about Beyonce Wong, man. <laughs> Sissy ass shit. But yeah. So anyway, see, I could have did another live. Whatever, man. <laughs> Whatever. I'm 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 trying. Maybe 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 they started. I don't know. I I don't want to say when because I, I don't know. But um, listen, y'all. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about that because y'all know it's not going to end with Ryan and um with Devin Haney. It's not going to end with him. He's just in the spotlight now.
That's what I say. Just think back. The last, the last two big surprises was Tyson Fury and um, Shakur Stevenson. You know, they was everybody was roasting both of them. And in fact, remember what 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 Tank Davis told him. Hey man, you need another fight or two to you know get some interest back in the fight. Yeah, so Tank sitting up there nice and comfortable, doing much of nothing, but talking shit on social media, you know. And and so, um, you know, remember Shakur was talking about he retiring from the sport and all that bullshit, and then y'all believed it. And I told y'all, y'all some damn fools if y'all really think this young man is retiring. Y'all really think that he? All right. How long did his retirement last? Two months. Yeah, some retirement. I told you guys, man. These, these guys are a bunch of little spoiled brats. They're not even men. They're kids. They can't even take a loss. They can't take a loss. They can't even. You know what? I fucked up. Yo, let me go do this film study. Me and the coach go sit here and watch what's going on. And, and this is, I mean, the, the traditional ways. Of, it's not about the traditional. The old things, like for example, when the last time you seen somebody do jumping jacks? Hmm. They act like jumping jacks don't watch and don't don't work anymore. Jump squats don't work anymore. Oh, only females supposed to do that. Stupid stuff you hear people say. They act like because a new piece of equipment come out, the old stuff don't work. No, it still works. They act like because COVID is here, nobody gets a, gets a cold anymore. Or, or flu. So anytime you call for the season, you think you might have COVID? You understand what I'm saying? No. The same shit's still here. The same old exercises still work. Bottom line is, the way people see things, the way people think, they always just want to say something and be heard, even when they don't make any sense. So yeah. Remember when, remember when Tank, Tank and look, Tank been here already. People was criticizing Tank when I'm like, yo, the dude is fighting. Give him his credit. Right? And, and here's the thing. Remember when he fought? Remember that night he fought Gamboa? Oh, he got roasted. Man, this motherfucker couldn't even knock out. He Man, he couldn't even fucking knock out a dude who had a bad leg. Oh, you want to know what they said? Yo, Haney, a box circles around this dude. Ryan, a box circles around this dude. Uh-huh. Then he went and he made Ryan quit. Now everybody's back to saying, after last night, oh, Tank a knock Haney out. But do you see what I'm saying? It This is the same recycled shit. They just take turns laughing at people. Yeah, y'all forgot about that, didn't y'all? When Ryan got dropped by Campbell, people gave him credit for getting back up fighting. He dropped Haney several times, and Haney kept getting back up fighting and made it to that final bell. Just saying. He don't deserve credit for that. He could have quit. He could have laid there and said, fuck it. Nah, he kept coming. He kept getting back up. And Ryan couldn't finish him off. I thought it was a good, weird fight. And Ryan won. So, <laughs> question. Question. Who do y'all think the next big upset might be? Think about it. I'm going to put this in the community section. So y'all can answer here. Y'all can answer in the community section. I'm going to put this there. Who y'all think, since y'all want to call it an upset, who y'all think the next upset will be? Frank Martin and Tank Davis? Deontay Wilder and Zhang fight? Who else we got coming up, y'all? Um, who else is on that card? Who else is on that card? I'm going to start with them two. I might have to come up with the other two afterwards. I'm just trying to do it before I get it all so y'all know who. Well, y'all go check the community section. I'm about to I'm about to take care of that. I, oh, and I, I, I wouldn't call Beevil or um, Baturia an upset if, if any one of them, whichever one out of them. I wouldn't call it an upset. Um, I wouldn't. Um, okay, so let's take it like this. Let's not say upset. I don't even like that term really. I don't, I don't, I don't. Who do y'all think the next fighter that's going to get laughed at and talked about the most? Let's say it that way. Baturviev and Beevil. 
Like, what fight do you think something disastrous could happen? Like, out of out of the fights that I just named, what fight do you think is like, damn, I, I could see this just going, like, 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 just think. If Wilder was to knock out Zane, this would be the perfect setup for him and Anthony Joshua. And especially if he, like, knocked him out early and it looked impressive, like, like you know, if Zane knocks out Wilder, it's going to be Wilder's washed up, he's finished, even though Zane is older than him. But, yeah, that that's what you want to hear. So, to me, I, no, I'm not going to give, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going to give you too much of that. I'm just going to give you the category. So, we got, we got Zane versus Wilder. Who do you think, do you think Wilder, do you think something is more likely to go wrong where a fighter, one of these fighters are going to come out this fight embarrassed? Wilder versus Zane. Tank Davis versus Frank Martin. Batervia versus Bevo. And who else do we got coming up? All right. Just check out the community section, y'all. Y'all see the category. I'm about to put it up there right now. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of people, and I will catch y'all on the next video.